Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to A Love For Me, a place where I share all my love for type 4 hair alongside some beauty and lifestyle content. And for all my oldies, all my subscribers, thank you so much for clicking in this video. I appreciate the love. Thank you so much for coming back. So for today's video, I'm fulfilling a request. Often, 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 I get asked to do makeup videos on the looks that I wear in my videos. I don't do anything special, um, and I'm not really someone who can teach anyone anything about makeup, so I didn't want to do a dedicated makeup video. That probably would just be a waste of your time. Instead, I decided to just do a chit chat, get ready with me, I'm going to apply the makeup and talk about a topic, and let that be that. So I, of course, like everyone else on the internet, purchased the Jackie Ina Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. If you don't, if you haven't seen a single review, this palette is amazing. Every single color is usable on my skin tone. And that don't happen very often. I mean, in this drawer, not that drawer, in this drawer, I have several palettes and I cannot use every single shade on my lid, in my crease, you know, etc. Right? I could, you can probably make any um, lighter shade work as far as a highlight, but using every single shade, that ain't easy. That ain't that ain't something that happens very frequently. So sorry, I just realized I didn't put on brow gel. And let's not even talk about brows. Like I like this one, not that one, but whatever. So my mirror is here because I'm going to be using it, and today. We're going to talk about natural hair mints. I have, I think, five listed that we're going to talk about um, because, you know, I watch videos all the time, right? I, I, I like to watch the, the people who create content here just as I create content. And there are some pervasive natural hair mints. Um, you guys aren't all going to agree with me concerning these mints. I know that for sure, but as long as you keep it cute in the comments, we'll be good. By the way, I've already done my base, you know. Um, I just need to do the eye look and finish the face. So this is filming makeup. I'm not going anywhere. I want to try this palette since I'm not going anywhere. So I'll list everything that's on my face in the description box below. I'm using sunlight too, so this is, this is going to go in and out. So first, training the hair. I hear that phrase all the time. All the time. People say, uh, I'm going to train my hair or my hair isn't trained. And I'm like, does your hair have feelings? Um, how in the world are you going to train your hair? Is your hair an animal? Like you're going to like, what, what are you, what are you going to do to train your hair? It's, it's hair. It's dead. Um, I don't, I don't know what you can do to train it. <laughs> Honestly, like what can you do to train it? It's hair. It, it doesn't have feelings. It, it, you, you can't like change behavior. All you could do is have hair that has its elasticity intact and hair that doesn't have its elasticity intact. Right? And I know for some people, they use train my hair to mean, you know, that elasticity element. But I think people should stop using it because there are a lot of people who use it in the old sense of the word. Like, you know, people would talk about they haven't trained their hair to stay straight when that's just heat damage, right? Heat damage is not training anything. Your hair is damaged. The elasticity is lost. You know that could be a choice. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. That's totally your choice. If you want straight hair and um, you wear your hair straight most of the time and you just don't care about your curl pattern, do you. That's cool. Um, but if you really think that you have to train your hair to do twist outs, you have to train your hair to do wash and goes, you're misinformed. I'm sorry. <laughs> if your hair is elastic, you should be able to go between twist outs and wash and goes and braid outs without a problem, right? Or just a good deep condition and you should be good. That's how that should work. It, it, it really isn't that deep. It really shouldn't be that deep. Um, if it is hard for you to go between the three, you probably have an elasticity issue. Where is my, oh there it is. Um, that is something totally different than training the hair, right? If you do a twist out and it kind of just like ruins everything and like you can't do a wash and go for like a month, you have an elasticity issue. Like it, it, it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to go between styles. If you can't, your elasticity is messed up and you need to do some treatments, figure it out. And I do have videos on elasticity, so I'll leave them linked. But training your hair is not, it's not really a thing. <laughs> and I know there'll be some people who disagree with me, but you know, there's there's damage versus not damage, and you can't train 
your hair to do a thing. It's either your hair has flexibility or it doesn't. And that really is the gamut. Like, that's it. You should be able to wear your hair however you want to wear it. Aside from heat styling, like if you heat style your hair, like I have, I've done videos where my hair is straight and then the next time I wash it, I do a wash and go and there's no heat damage and my curls are fine. Like they're completely intact because my hair has elasticity, right? The elasticity is fine. I haven't like destroyed my hair. If that's the case, then you, your wash and go should be fine. Your, your twist out should be fine. You should be able to go between them. Then we have a marketing ploy that so many people really do play into and I, I, I kind of like, it's kind of sad, like, marketing is effective, but really, this is one we've got to stop playing into, and that is the idea that products are made for your porosity. They're not. They're really not. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do here. Either I'm going to go purple, or I'm going to do the brown. I think I'm going to do the brown. Okay. Okay. Hit, products are not made for your porosity. That is totally marketing, right? All porosity does is tell you how products will behave, and that's it. Like, they don't make, like, products aren't made in such a way that only people with low porosity hair can use them, or only people with high porosity hair can use them. Like, that's not how any of this works. <laughs> if a product can, like, any product should be able to be used on either porosity. And that's just straight up how it should be. Like You really shouldn't have to buy a particular set of products or stay away from a particular set of products because you have a certain porosity. That's, that's not, that just doesn't even make sense. What company, like it, it's all marketing. Every company wants to make as many dollars as they can. Absolutely. So why would they even make products that not everyone can use? It's straight up marketing. And you see like, People with low porosity hair do sponsor videos with products that are like marketed towards people with low porosity. That is totally a thing, right? This camera angle is so awkward. I'll get this, I, this will get better, guys. Um, <laughs> I will do better. Um, but all porosity tells you is like how the product will behave. So a deep conditioner, let's say my one of my favorites, my L pomegranate, that deep conditioner works whether you have low or high porosity hair. It, it works the same, right? It, it is still a conditioner that will leave your hair moisturized. However, if you have low porosity hair, you need to add a little heat to your usage of it so that it penetrates your hair faster, right? And that's pretty much it. Like, you really shouldn't say, like, that's pretty much it. No product is really just made for one porosity. Like that, a brand would be completely cutting off revenue if it did that. It, it's all marketing. It's we on YouTube talk about porosity, so they respond, right? They're like, "Oh, well, porosity. This is a thing. Let's make products just for this porosity." It's just like the, the evolution of the co-wash, right? Co-washes with cleansing ingredients are really just shampoos, right? They're just milder shampoos, and they used to call them shampoos, but then. At one point, they dialed into what we were saying here and they started making co-washes because there was a whole method out there that said people shouldn't use <laughs> um, shampoos. They should use co-washes. So they started making products and named a co-wash when they're really just mild shampoos. That's just straight up facts, right? So don't fall for the marketing. Don't cut off your possibilities, right? Use whatever you want to use, however you want to use it. And let that be that. <laughs> you do not have to cut off, you know, you don't have to say, oh, that is it for me, right? Because it's not marketed towards me. No, you can use whatever you want, anytime you want. It's all for you. All of it. <laughs> try it. Give it a try. Maybe you have to figure out how to use it better for you, but in the end, it's all for you. So don't cut off your blessing. <laughs> And then in the same vein, protein, man. So many people are like, I can't use protein because of one or two products. And they haven't tried anything with 
protein in years. And it's like, not everything is gonna work for everybody, regardless of your hair type, regardless of your porosity. Like, not everything is gonna work for everybody. All you have to do is try it. Give it a co give it a try. Like, if you do that, you may find that it works for you just fine. Protein sensitivity really isn't a thing. It just means that your hair did not need protein at that time. It did not need that level of protein at that time. There are plenty of mild protein conditioners that can really, really benefit your hair if you give them a chance. Just because you have high porosity doesn't mean you shouldn't use protein. Just because you have low porosity just doesn't mean you shouldn't use protein, right? The same rules apply. You don't need a strong, strong protein treatment if, you know, your hair is not damaged. You don't need Afigee Two-Step if your hair is not damaged. If you have color-treated hair, then yeah, go ahead and use that Afigee Two-Step. You know, it'll be fine. Use it. But overall, you shouldn't need something that strong. But to cut yourself off from all strengthening ingredients or all protein is probably asking for breakage at some point. Your hair is made up of keratin. Keratin really is the best thing for your hair, right? And so you should be able to use some product with keratin in it unless you're allergic to the ingredient for some reason, shape, or form. Or, you know, you're vegan and you don't want to use keratin. Um, or you just, there's like a moral reason you don't want to use the ingredient. Um, it really shouldn't be a situation where you're like, I can't use it. Oh, no. Everybody could use a strengthening ingredient or two. They help your hair take in moisture. Don't cut yourself off from your blessing. Don't cut your hair off from its blessing. Like, it really is okay to use a strengthening ingredient or two. <laughs> Again, your hair has no feelings, so you are not protein sensitive <laughs> then one that I even saw the other day on a national hair Facebook group um, braids do not grow your hair guys I don't know like this is such a pervasive myth that things grow your hair where when hair growth is internal it is straight up internal there is nothing you could do I'm trying to find a brush in particular um there is nothing you could do to externally to change your hair growth. It ain't gonna happen. That's not how this works. That is so pretty. Lituation is so pretty, guys. It's getting too high. <laughs> I'm getting too crazy with it, but it is so pretty. Oh my goodness. This is such a pretty shade. I'm getting way too crazy with it because it's so pretty. <laughs> But it's so pretty. <gasps> okay, let me blend that. Oh my goodness. Hair growth is completely and utterly internal, guys. There's nothing on the outside that you can do to make your hair grow. It's all internal. I mean, literally, nothing. Nothing you can do. It is internal. It sprouts from inside your head, and your hair is dead. And it's so funny because I get so much pushback on that. You would be surprised. I think. Some people would be surprised. You know, I get the don't believe everything everybody tells you type of thing. Like, people really like to say, <laughs> be like, hair growth is not internal. Braids don't grow your hair. You just don't have a chance to break your hair off. So you see the growth. And that's really all it is. <laughs> it's like, that is it. If you don't have a chance to break your hair off, you're going to suddenly see the growth. Hair, hair growth comes from inside your body. It, like... What you do, what you eat, like all of that matters more um, than anything else. How you treat your body matters more than anything else. Your hair growth is completely, completely internal. You just don't have a chance to break your hair off, so it stays. <laughs> wow, I put on way too much right there. Oh, that's going to be a blend, blend, blend situation. Where is... That could be a real situation right there. Oh, Jesus. I ain't trying to look like that. And when you wear braids, what happens is you don't have a chance to break your hair off. So you get a potential. You get to see the potential 
for hair growth that you have, right? So like every month, this is how much my hair could grow. And then the moment you take the braids out, as long as you handle it well and you haven't destroyed your hair with the braids in, right? You don't have a bunch of split ends. You you don't um, take them out and like immediately wash your hair. Before, like you actually take the time to get the shit hair out. You'll retain that length until you do something to break your hair off. And if you never learn how to handle your own hair, what's going to happen is that you're going to wear braids back to back to back to grow your hair. And then when you get it long, you're just going to break it off because you never knew how to take care of your hair at any point. <laughs> you just kept wearing braids or wigs or whatever to get your hair where it is. And then you get to the point where it's like, oh, what am I supposed to do? How can I fix my hair now? You never took the time to learn. And then my last hair myth is that coily 4BC hair has no curl pattern, which really makes no sense in the first place. Um, like, if you think about it, but you have a curl pattern. Everybody has a curl pattern. Whether it's a wave, whether it's a curl, you have a curl pattern. Otherwise, you don't even fit into the type 4 category. <laughs> you really don't, right? Um, you may be experiencing a significant amount of frizz, so you can't see it. We all have a curl pattern. It's just some people have so much frizz around their curl pattern, they can't see it, right? And they don't know the techniques to really define it yet. But we all have a curl pattern, guys. Otherwise, you don't even fit in the type 4 category. It is a curly, coily, wavy category. <laughs> so, there may be some straight hair naturals, but for the most part, I see people who just don't have hydrated hair so they have a bunch of frizz around their strands or their elasticity is gone but i said all that to say that there are always things you should challenge right you should always challenge the pervasive rules right all the rules challenge them try things don't try things without reason but try things because the thing that set people say is not for you or the thing that people say won't work for you might just be the thing if you like this type of video, make sure you comment below. Let me know anything about the video, anything in the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you didn't enjoy it, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> and until next time, check me out on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, and the blog. Thanks for watching.